Hello wonderful person, this is Anton and imagine for a second that something really massive passed through our galaxy. How do you think we would be able to see it, especially if it's something as invisible or hard to see as a supermassive black hole like the one right here? And so now that it's passed through our galaxy, we should be able to observe something. Like for example, this hole right there might have been caused by the uh, passage of this black hole. And so today we're going to discuss a study that was just recently released um, that suggests that something really massive did shoot through the Milky Way and we've observed the effects of this unusual passage. Welcome to What The Math. Okay, so in this case, it's actually kind of difficult to really see the effects because the masses involved and also the amount of stars involved is quite high. But the scientist behind this particular paper, whose name is Anna Bonaka and who presented her work and whose actual PowerPoint presentation you can find in the description below, talks just about that. It seems that there are signs that something really, really massive, and we're talking about a mass of about million masses of the sun, very close to a typical supermassive black hole, passed through the Milky Way. Now, okay, let's talk a little bit more about how all of this was discovered and also what all of this suggests. So first of all, the scientist behind this paper was looking at what's known as the stellar streams. You may have known already that our galaxy is surrounded by these unusual, almost like ring formations. And these are stellar streams that were created by the tidal disruptions or essentially gravitational disruption of our own galaxy of various objects like, for example, um, dwarf galaxies or um, all kinds of globular clusters that passed too close to the gravitational source. In other words, think of them as rings of Saturn, but in galactic terms. One of the most recently discovered streams is this right here. This is the Fimbultu stream, named after the Norse river Fimbultu. And um, it's composed of about 310 different stars. And as you can see, it forms this really, really cool looking stream connected to a globular cluster named Omega Centauri. And this was discovered only a few months ago from when, when I'm making this video. So we've discovered quite a lot of these unusual streams. And many of them can only be seen from um, either northern or southern hemisphere. The one that we're interested in is this one right here, GD1 stream. This was discovered back in 2006. Just like the other streams, um, it's sort of created by something really ancient. Most likely a dwarf galaxy, but we're not really sure. And it contains a lot of really ancient stars um, that are very, very poor in metal, very um, typical of an ancient dwarf galaxy or an ancient global cluster. And then it passed very close to our galaxy and got stretched into this really long stream. It's a little bit difficult to see it, but it's there. And when Anna was studying this particular uh, stream, she simulated the model of the stream. This is kind of what it should look like, but then realized that it looked different from what we were supposed to be seeing. In other words, something was not really adding up. There are these unusual star formations that were sticking out as if something punched through them. And all of this data that was collected by the Gaia telescope was actually really accurate. So um, something was happening here and she was trying to explain what. She then created another simulation where something did perturb the stream and it looked like this. And as you can see, it sort of resembles what we're seeing. And specifically here, the uh, perturbation happened approximately 495 million years ago. The mass of this object was about 5 million masses of the sun and it was about 10 uh, parsec or approximately 33 light years in radius and moved at about 250 kilometers per second. In other words, we're talking about something very similar to Sagittarius A star, the supermassive black hole in the middle of our own galaxy. And that something, if it passed through this area, would create what we're observing. Here's another look at the data. And as you can see, there are these unusual gaps in the actual stream that are difficult to explain without something massive causing them. So kind of like a supermassive black hole or maybe a very, very large and very massive chunk of dark matter. So this is where the mystery begins because we have no idea what caused this. If this was a supermassive black hole, practically equivalent in mass and in size to Sagittarius A star that you see right here, 
it should be creating a lot of energy, a lot of emissions and a lot of various types of electromagnetic radiation that we should be seeing from everywhere. In other words, if our galaxy had another supermassive black hole, which would be kind of unusual, um, we should be able to see it, right? Because if it passed through those stars, at least a few of those stars may have been captured or destroyed in the process, so the radiation should be visible. But unfortunately, when we look into the night skies where this object passed, or the location where it may have been, there's nothing. No radiation is detected, no supermassive black hole, nothing that would suggest that um, a very large, very powerful object was creating any kind of energy. So this leaves us with another mystery. So maybe it could have been another proof of dark matter. Maybe this was a very massive, very large collection of dark matter particles that moved through this area and generated the disturbances that we observed. But right now, this is just a speculation. There's absolutely no proof of this being dark matter. It's probably just one of the better explanations though. However, it could also be something else. It could also be something like this. Something like a typical globular cluster that was very massive, approximately 5 million masses of the sun, and by passing through this area, it then slowly fell apart. So maybe it got destroyed or turned into another um, stellar stream that we haven't detected yet. So it's very possible that this was just a collision between our galaxy and yet another globular cluster. But once again, there's no visual proof just yet. Even though we've, we've looked at those areas quite thoroughly, okay, not that thoroughly, but we've looked a lot, we haven't really seen any proof of this happening. So if it was some sort of a globular cluster, or if it was some sort of a black hole, there's just no visual proof whatsoever yet. But because Anna was the first to discover this, there's definitely going to be follow-up studies that might discover what's really happening in this particular region and what really caused this unusual disturbance in the GD1 stream. Now, um, in the future, we might discover even more proof or more collisions that have occurred, but this one is very mysterious because 5 million masses of the sun is a lot. This is basically, like I said, a supermassive black hole sized object. And if it's a rogue black hole from another galaxy, that would be a tremendous discovery. So for all we know, um, in the next few months and possibly in the next few years, we'll actually discover what really happened here. For now though, it's yet another mystery we're going to add to the list of mysteries that are yet to be solved, just like the dark matter itself. Anyway, on that note, that's all I wanted to mention in this video. Do check out um, Anna's uh, PowerPoint and also her presentation itself in the link in the description below. You can also check out the original paper for GD1 when it was discovered back in 2006. It's also in the description below. But on that note, that's all I'm going to mention. Subscribe if you still haven't, share this with someone who loves learning about space and sciences, and come back tomorrow to learn something else. I'll see you tomorrow, space out, and as always, bye bye. And maybe even consider supporting the channel on Patreon because it does help me quite a lot to make this basically a full-time job. Anyway, space out.